Hi, I'm Coleman Wise. Uh, the study that I'm going to discuss is post-secondary transition outcomes for students with disabilities. Uh, again, I'm Coleman Wise. I am a special education teacher at Smyrna High School. Here in the room with me is Mark Gagne, who is a math instructor at Stewart's Creek High School, and Sherry Sutherland, who is uh, an assistant principal at Smyrna High School. So let's talk about post-secondary transition outcomes for students with disabilities. An introduction to the topic, transition planning, and when I say transition planning, I mean students transitioning from secondary education to the post-secondary education world. That could be college, that could be tech school, vocational rehabilitation, any number of transition programs that exist. With appropriate training and support, many, student, many people with disabilities can enter the working world and provide for their own needs. That's why this area is a legally required area to be addressed in a student's IEP. So I conducted a literature review and this literature review focuses on two important aspects of transition planning. The first are the, tra are the challenges that are faced by students with disabilities in transitioning to the adult world. And when I say challenges, I have some caveats with that. Not all students are gonna face the same challenges based on their disability and their intellect and, and things of that nature. So these are going to be very generalized challenges that are often faced by students with disabilities. Then the second component uh, that the literature re review focused on was effective transition plans. What goes into an effective transition plan? And that's for IEP teams to consider when they are creating a transition plan for a student and what kind of services that student will need. So let's look at the transition challenges first. The first challenge that was uncovered by research is there's a lack of accurate data of how many students there actually are in post-secondary education. One study says that it could be around 10%. Another study says that it could even be up to 80%. And that's all disabilities. That's learning disabilities, any type of, of disability. The wide discrepancy in these studies, obviously I think it's more than 10%, I think it's significantly less than 80%. But the wide discrepancy shows that we can't plan programs to help these students if we don't even know how many there are. Okay, so that's one major challenge. Another challenge is a lot of times in K-12 education, students with disabilities are exposed to fewer opportunities than their non-disabled peers. And that could be some students require, the nature of their disability requires them to be in self-contained classrooms for their whole education career. Other students are able to go on job sites. Other students are able to be included. So the range of opportunities that a student is exposed to can really affect their transition planning. Adapting to new environments is a struggle for many students with disabilities. Uh, especially students that are on the autism spectrum that kind of get set in a routine. It's really hard to transition away from that routine. So that's a challenge that they face. Communication disorders often prohibit students from being able to work with customers and things like that because they, they might not have the communication skills that are needed. Uh, and also employee discrimination. A lot of businesses still try not to hire people with disabilities despite that that be an illegal way of discrimination. So effective transition plans, what are the components of effective transition plans? Uh, the first component is knowledge of disability legislation. An IEP team needs to know what type of rules the student is going to have to navigate when they're in the adult world, and that's gonna be an important aspect of teaching them self-advocacy skills. For example, a student, when they get into the working world, might not know that they can request an employee manual in an audio format if they have a, a reading disability, um, that that would be a reasonable request that an employer would more than likely have to comply with if they met all the other standards for the job. Things like that. You, they wouldn't know that if they had never been taught what the ADA says. Use of community programs, that involves IEP team members helping to match the student with programs that already exist in the community that could help the student. That could be vocational rehabilitation or different programs at, at universities. Also, collaboration with parents, peers, and other professionals. 
nobody knows it all on their own. The professionals uh, might have the best access to the services that the student needs, but the parent probably knows the student the best. Um, students, peers might even be able to participate in limited um, fashion with, with uh, transition planning and, and things. So the research questions that my study will focus on is, does a student's educational pathway make a difference in a student's transition outcome? What I mean by educational pathway, I'm really referring to general education diploma or special education diploma. Does a general education diploma help students more in the working world or does the special education diploma allow them to have access to more services? Those type of questions. Second question, are some transition programs more effective than others at helping students achieve employment and independent living? So the purpose of the study, just a quick summary, the passage of IDEA made transition an important aspect of a student's IEP, okay? And it has been effective. The transition outcomes have increased dramatically since the passage of IDEA, but significant gaps still exist when compared to students without disabilities. So this study will assist educators and transition planners in matching students with appropriate resources. So we'll go over the null hypotheses. The educational pathway that a student follows has no significant difference in transition outcome. And the second null hypothesis is all transition programs are equally effective at helping students achieve employment and independent living. Okay. The research will be a mixed method study that will contain two survey instruments. Participants, uh, and I'll go over the participants shortly, uh, participants will be contacted in person for the first survey instrument and via phone for the second instrument. And as we'll find out later, the instruments are going to take place one year apart. All right, definitions. When I say IEP, uh, I'm referring to a contract developed by a team which guides the instruction of a student with a disability during their secondary education. A student with a disability uh, refers to a student who has served under an IEP during their secondary education. Transition planner is any person with the responsibility of helping that student transition from secondary education to whatever comes next. Transition program is a program designed to assist students with disabilities in transitioning from secondary education to the adult world. For this study, I'm focusing on students who had a certification of mild to moderate intellectual disability. And for this, it has to meet the criteria outlined in the DSM-5. Pre-graduation survey, which will be the first survey that's conducted, uh, will be administered to participants prior to their exit from secondary education, probably their last week before graduation. Post-graduation survey, uh, it's a research instrument that will be administered to participants one year after they exit from secondary education. Okay, the participants are former high school students who have graduated with either a general education diploma or a special education diploma, and they must have an IEP certification of mild to moderate intellectual disability. The setting is the Rutherford County School District in Middle Tennessee. It is one of the fastest growing counties in the nation and it serves students from a variety of cultures and backgrounds. For data collection, data co will be collected over a one-year period. It will be two surveys, again, a pre-graduation survey and a post-graduation survey will be given one year apart. The pre-graduation survey will focus on the post-secondary goals and plans for that student after graduation. The post-graduation survey will be a follow-up that will document their progress toward achieving those goals one year after graduation. It will document any resources or programs that they're using, if they're at a college or a university, if they are in vocational rehabilitation, if they're at a tech school, if they're in a group home, any of those type of things to compare different services. The data sets from the post-graduation survey will be compared to the data sets from the pre-graduation survey and the comparisons will be analyzed to determine which programs and resources, if there are any that were used, best prepared that student for the adult world and meeting their post-secondary goals. There are several limitations of this study. Uh, the first limitation is, and I mentioned this a little bit before, the inconsistent nature of disability manifestation. No two disabilities are the same, and even within the same disability category, students are gonna behave differently it, 
it's not a ro robotic thing. It's very fluid to students' personality and things like that. So generalizing a lot of the findings of the study are going to be difficult because different students react to different stimuli and different things in different ways. And also the differing post-secondary goals and needs for each individual student. Uh, one, while one student may, um, a goal might be college, another student a goal might be vocational rehabilitation, another student the goal may be just to access the community independently. Um, that's going to be a limitation for generalizing the study to other groups as well because, again, disabilities are all different. All right, so in conclusion, according to existing research, effective transition plans can allow a person with a disability to gain meaningful employment, independent living, and have a higher quality of life. Um, and research shows that these transition skills are best learned while students are still in the K through 12 educational environment. Um, and so that's why this information would be important to anybody participating in the transition process. So I will open it up to questions. When you talk about your participants, Cole, and we've talked about the two different type of diplomas that mm -hmm. these students can earn, will you be looking at um, a special ed diploma or a regular ed diploma that they receive, or will it be maybe a mixture of both? It'll be a mixture, and that will be part of the study is did the general ed diploma, if you're comparing two students with similar this is similar intellect, similar disabilities, and one got a general education diploma and one got a special education diploma. Did that special education diploma open them up to, to more transition opportunities because maybe they were um, seen as higher need? Um, or did the general education diploma, because in that program they were probably educated more with typical peers and things, did that actually prepare them for the adult world more so than the special ed? So those are the type of things that I'm going to compare, so I want a mixture of, of both. Could you like maybe further this study later on just to determine if like students from, you know, because I, I have a feeling a lot of this has to deal with the educational quality for special ed in a given school. There is a disparaging quality level of special ed from one school to the next. Mm -hmm. Could this study be later on further to examine what we consider an effective special ed school compared to a school that maybe is not as effective, maybe find a dry school. I haven't thought about that, but I can see how it could easily. Because I can see that as being a potentially that. lurking sure. variable inside of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Any others? Okay, thank you very much.